Hey everyone, uh, it's Mr. Geiselman here to talk to you a little bit about weight and mass and how gravity affects mass to give us weight. So that's where we're going today. So to begin with, gravity is a force. Um, when we say that a force is an action that causes an object with mass to change its velocity. Remember that a change in velocity is what we would call an acceleration. So any force is going to be an action that causes that to happen. Uh, on Earth, one force we can always count on is gravity, right? We've known about it for a very long time. Every person who's ever lived on Earth has experienced it. And it's acting on any object that has mass. So gravity is a force that changes an object's uh, velocity or causes it to accelerate, right, that has mass. So uh, the object has to have mass for this to happen. So again, if you remember, it's a really simple way to think about a force. It's a push or pull on an object. So gravity is a push or pull on an object that causes that object to change its velocity or to accelerate. Same thing. So when we think about mass, mass by definition is, amount, is a measure of the amount of stuff in an object or the amount of matter, how much mass is an object is meant by how much stuff actually is inside of that object. We use kilograms most often to define that. And it's what our uh, unit to actually when calculate um, a force is going to be used. So we're, when we use mass, right, we're going to calculate it in or kilograms. To measure mass, we use a balance. And a balance is different than a scale. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So no matter where you are, in the universe, your mass is always going to be the same. If we sent you up in a rocket ship to Pluto, uh, your mass isn't going to change, right? No matter what, we're not going to take more stuff out of you. You're, the amount of stuff, the amount of matter in that object is going to be the same, no matter where it's located, right? So no matter what, our mass is going to stay the same. Here's a simple picture of our balances. We have very similar ones here at the high school. So then we get into this thing called weight. And everybody's really familiar with weight because we've all been exposed to it. We all know our own weights, right? So weight is a measure of the gravitational force exerted on an object. It includes both acceleration, or sorry, excuse me, mass and acceleration due to gravity. So weight is a force. Right? It's how hard gravity is pulling on an object. So a heavier object, one that has more weight, is being pulled on more strongly by gravity. There's an equation for that. Weight is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. And here on Earth, acceleration due to gravity is constant. No matter where on Earth you are, gravity is going to pull on you at the same acceleration. All right, so something with 100 kilograms of mass in St. Michael, Minnesota is going to be the same over on the other side of the world. It's going to have the same weight. And remember that weight is a force. So you can think about it as F equals MA. Force of weight is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. So if you multiply the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity, you will get the weight of that object. And because weight is a force, we are going to use newtons to describe that force, right? That's what we're going to measure in the metric system, weight in. In the English system, we use pounds, all right? But our force, that weight of force is equal to, that force of weight is equal to something in newtons. And obviously now this is that point where we would actually use a scale. So if you have a scale in your bathroom, right, that's not measuring your mass. It's measuring how strongly the force of gravity pulls down on your mass at, and uh, due to that acceleration due to gravity. So weight is a force and a scale measures force. So if weight equals mass times gravity, weight depends on gravity so that if the gravity changes, then the weight will also change. Here on Earth, that doesn't really happen, right? Your 
always going to be pulled down at the same rate. The acceleration, the G here, is always going to be the same on Earth. But if we are somewhere other than Earth, that weight can change based on the location. So here on Earth, an object with a mass of 50 kilograms has a weight of about 110 pounds. Again, that's the English system. But we would take its mass multiplied by g, gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, and we can get a weight. That same person, that same 50 kilogram mass on Mars would weigh 42 pounds. That tells you that the acceleration due to gravity on Mars is much less than it is here on Earth. So here are some accelerations due to gravity on different planets or on the sun. So on the sun, um, it, acceleration due to gravity would be 247 meters per second squared. That's really, really strong. That's going to be moving really, really quickly, right? And that's going to be the result in mass times gravity. You're going to have a really, really big weight. Mercury is small. Venus is a little bit smaller than we are. Uh, then we have Mars. We just saw that Mars has a smaller one than us, right? Our acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Jupiter, because it has a much larger mass, the force of gravity is going to be much greater, has a uh, acceleration due to gravity of 24.79. Saturn is 10.44. Neptune is a little bit bigger than Earth and Saturn at 11.15. And Uranus at 8.87. Now, I have a mass of 100 kilograms. What I want you guys to do using this equation, weight equals mass times the acceleration to gravity, due to gravity, I want you to take my mass, right, substitute it into the problem, and then find the gravitate or the acceleration due to gravity for Neptune and solve for that. So hopefully you were able to figure out that Neptune has an acceleration due to gravity of 11.15 meters per second squared and you're able to plug it into the problem here. Multiply it by my mass that was given to you in the problem, and you figured out that my weight on Neptune was 100 and, sorry, 1,115 newtons. 1,115 newtons by taking weight equals mass times gravity. So we're gonna do three practice problems. I'm going to read them here with you, and your job is to come up with answers for all three. So, weight equals mass times gravity. To determine which is weight, mass, and gravity in the problem, I'm asking you guys to figure out, all right, what our variables are going to be. So, in number one, what is the weight in newtons of a 25-kilogram toddler on Earth? Well, obviously 25 kilograms is our mass, right? And we're looking for weight at the end. So we're looking for weight. On Earth tells us that we are going to be using the acceleration due to gravity here on Earth. If you don't know this already, our acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. So find the weight in problem one. Problem two, determine the mass of a large boulder resting on the side of a hill on Earth if it has a weight of 3,785 newtons. So in red here, it tells us the weight. So our weight is 3,785 newtons. That belongs right here. On Earth tells us again that we're using Earth's acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. And what we're looking for in the end is the mass of that boulder. And our final one, a 72 kilogram astronaut is standing on the surface of Venus where she measures her weight at 639 newtons. Calculate the acceleration 
due to gravity on Venus. So we're giving you a mass and a weight, and you're looking to find acceleration due to gravity, which is the G in the problem. All right. Choose which answer has the three correct answers. Go. So hopefully you figured all this out. On the first problem, we're going to use the equation weight equals mass times gravity. We're going to sub in our 25 kilograms for the mass and 9.8 meters per second squared for gravity. And that gives us an answer for that toddler, all right, a weight of 245 newtons. On number two, we're looking at the mass of the boulder. We're trying to figure out the M. To do that, I divide both sides by G, and then I would get mass is equal to weight over gravity. It says it's here on Earth, so I know my, uh, my gravitation, or sorry, my value for G, my acceleration due to gravity, is 9.8 meters per second squared. And if I take my weight of 3,785 newtons divided by 9.8 meters per second squared, I get an answer of 3,000, or sorry, 386.2 kilograms. 386.2 kilograms. So that's our mass. And in the final one, we're given mass and we're given weight. So I'm going to divide both sides by mass because I want G all by itself. So I get G equals weight divided by mass. And that gives me the equation weight 639 newtons divided by my mass of 72 kilograms. And that gives us an answer of 8.875 meters per second squared. So if you have any questions on weight or how to use the weight equation, Please let Mr. Oleg, Mr. Swenson, or myself know. That's it for today. Have a great day, everyone.